Welcome to Total Reviews, the web show where we take a look at games of interest and see if they really are worth a purchase in partnership with Games Planet, where you can purchase games like My Choice Today from an officially licensed game seller. In this episode, we take a look at Bus Simulator 2018. Unlike some other titles with the word simulator in them, followed by a year, Bus Simulator 2018 seems to actually be a well thought out and decently made title from the get go. Featuring officially licensed buses is definitely a good sign in my books. The goal of the game is twofold. Firstly, it is about driving buses, keeping to a schedule and obeying the rules of the road. And secondly, it is about running your own bus company, meaning having to manage profit and loss, staff, branding and sponsorship, as well as setting up routes and taking account of route viability. This is something I have not seen in another title to this extent. But before we go on further into that, it's time for the specs. Available for Windows 7, 8 and 10, but only in 64-bit variants, Bus Simulator 2018 requires a minimum spec of an Intel i3 or AMD Phenom X4 processor running around 3.2-3.3 GHz, 6 GB of RAM and a GTX 750 or equivalent graphics card. The minimum specs are actually not that high for a modern machine, but if your machine was a budget machine from say a few years ago, you may find yourself struggling just a little bit. Recommended specs state a 4th generation Intel 4670 4670 or better uh, processor or you're looking at uh, an AMD FX 8370 and you're looking at about 3.4 GHz for the Intel maybe going up towards 4 GHz for the AMD processor as well as 8 GB of RAM and they say a GTX 970 or AMD Radeon uh, R9 290 uh, graphics card. That being said, I'm running this on Obia and Overclocked, but a 780 Ti, and it seems to be running absolutely fine as you're going to see from the footage. Um, but that is still somewhat on the higher end, even a 970 is going towards the higher end, maybe not current generation, but still going up there. DirectX 11 is also required, as you would expect, as well as 6.5 gigabytes of storage space, be that a uh, hard drive or SSD. Right, back to the title itself. As I said, Bus Simulator is not just about driving buses, but about running a bus company and ensuring routes are optimized and efficient. It was definitely different. Starting up the game, I was happy to see that immediately there was some color tuning to ensure that the game was displayed correctly on my screen and because I have a screen that is slightly outside the normal uh, or the norms on color display, I did need to make sure that I made some adjustments. I was also pleased that immediately picked up my steering wheel. So with an immediate pickup of the steering wheel, you know that they've thought about this and the options for setting up my wheel were plentiful, including dead zones and exponent values for sensitivity and linearity. Graphics options were similarly detailed, allowing me to tune up the visuals to best suit my PC and what I preferred. Plus, there was native track IR and Toby eye tracking built into it, meaning that any software that used those protocols would work as head trackers in the title. Creating a company, i.e. a new game, was simple enough, and a sandbox style mode seemed to be available, or at least one where you could not go bankrupt, as well as an arcade style gameplay, but since this is me, I went for realistic. After that I had to create my own avatar, which was not something that seemed all too important, but nevertheless was nice to see. Getting into the game, I was pleasantly surprised at the amount of depth that the title seemed to offer. Having avoided watching any videos of it beforehand, I was expecting more of a driving focus sim. Uh, with little to nothing outside of profit and loss, potential damage to a bus, that was all I was expecting. Instead, I was greeted with a tutorial that taught me all about the features of a bus, from unlocking doors to using the ticketing system, to teaching me about driving a route. After finishing the tutorial drive, I was given a very nice, look, uh, nice looking interface, where my primary goal was displayed, as well as my routes, a large map that took up most of the screen, and some buttons for different pages along the side that allowed me to view my drivers, buses, finances, and even connect to multiplayer, which is actually something that I don't do in this review. In terms of buses, there are 12 licensed buses available, all with different driving characteristics and of course different sizes. You start off with the Mercedes-Benz Citaro K, which is small and relatively nimble, and you move your way up as you progress and unlock more buses to, for example, a Cetra S416, which 
I've never actually seen here in the UK. Uh, there was the Man's Lion City A37. Uh, there was the new Iveco. Uh, so that was the Iveco Urban Way. And then you went on to uh, Bendy Buses. And with the Bendy Buses, you actually had um, ones like the Citaro G, which an 18 meter version of the Urban Way, or the Lion City CNG. And if, like me, Bendy Buses are not your thing, then there is a Cetra bus that is longer, but not Bendy. Sadly, I couldn't find any double-decker buses available, which I think would have been awesome to see and could have added an extra challenge in terms of creating routes that have enough height clearance so you'd only be able to stick certain buses along certain routes. Sticking with buses though, each bus can be customised with colours, liveries and decals and really this is where I found the Steam Workshop currently excels. Downloading some decals really gives the buses a more realistic feeling. Getting the decals in the right place though little bit fiddly but with some patience can be done certainly the bus seems far less plain and far more realistic with realistic logos back into driving i got around to testing three buses whilst grabbing footage and tried out all all the different weather and time of day combinations each bus definitely feels different and you do have to adapt your driving style to have the bus turning or slowing down at the right place a larger bus on tighter streets definitely poses a challenge Similarly, nighttime is a bit more of a challenge, not just in terms of things looking different, but the fact that less people are using the bus. Rain, however, is just something else. It was extremely hard to look in the mirrors, and driving it is far tougher because of that. Lastly, the little bits that pop up when driving, such as having to use a ramp for a wheelchair user, or bus stops closed, road maintenance, etc., brings a depth that I really like in this title because it helps make each run just slightly different from the last and having that uniqueness on each journey is what I think will keep people coming back to this title. Inevitably a title like this will have some downsides and to make sure this is a balanced review of the title which I actually do like uh, I will go through some of them now. For the first has to be the map itself. It's not a bad map at all but it does get a little bit boring after a while because it just does not flow as well as a real city and the fact that there is just one map that needs sections to be unlocked is a definite downside as you unlock more areas it definitely gets more interesting to play but the grind just to get to certain points for example to unlock just the second area is just it really ruins the gameplay it really really does I'm looking forward to seeing if, if players make real city maps on the Steam Workshop, which I feel would be incredibly popular as long as they are fully unlocked. Second, the sound bites of chatter become repetitive very, very quickly, and in many ways start to become annoying to the point where you just want to mute the chatter. But that in itself would detract from the feeling of driving a bus. And coupled with the fact that the subtitles do not seem to match for the most part, I feel like this title has some quality control issues, especially as I also noticed that a bunch of tooltips referencing the Unreal Action buttons. So instead of referencing a normal text that you'd expect you and I to read, it would reference the action button that you would find in Unreal Engine, something that would be linked to, and now this is for programmers and game developers, something that would be linked to the blueprints or um, a variable in C or something like that and that's what it seemed to be referencing which I think just shows that there's maybe a slight lack of quality control. Lastly and probably most importantly we have to talk about the AI. Now we all know how artificial intelligence can drastically change the playability and replay factor of a title and we also know how hard it is to create a decent AI. Sadly this game does fall short in that regard between the time I got this game and captured some of the footage that you're seeing and the time that this review is coming out, there was an update. In fact, there have been two updates. Uh, in one of them, the AI was certainly improved, but they still feel rather lackluster, a bit unaware of surroundings. Um, it's just, they seemingly lack that human factor or taking a chance or not risking it. Um, I would not expect, to be honest, any realistic car driving out on the road if i was driving a bus out on on the real roads i would not expect any car to act in the way they do or or just a traffic flow to act in the way it does 
the way it does in Bus Simulator 2018. That's just not realistic. On top of that, the turning was very sharp. The pathfinding seemed to be constantly resetting itself, and you'll notice this with trucks for example and cars also cars constantly indicating left and right left and right as they approach a turn um, so that was something that definitely I was looking at and the brakes felt very binary so in that I'm talking about the traffic was either braking or accelerating or keeping a constant speed there was no progression to the brakes so it just felt like they were full on the brakes or full off the brakes full on the accelerator and full off it just did not feel smooth and that in itself is the biggest reason why I would get tired of the title that being said the fact that there's been an update means that the developers are obviously working on improving it and I have to mention that because that shows that they understand what they are lacking and wish to improve upon it so Euro Truck Simulator, for example, is mostly the same, and to this day receives updates, some of which do improve the AI. So if Bus Simulator does the same, I will definitely play it more. But in my opinion, it must improve, even if it's just in terms of the flow. And actually, now thinking about it, there is one other downside that just came to mind. Speed bumps. They have, they have to be taken far too slowly. It's just way too slow, and the potholes have to be the most annoying aspect of the driving surface ever I, th I just think they've got to be removed they really do it just it makes it a chore to drive instead of having a, a title that's a joy to drive and it's not that it, that you're going to have potholes in the road of course you're going to have potholes in the road but not that many not in that fashion and not in a way where I suppose you just have to constantly swerve out the way for a pothole. It just doesn't feel, again, it's all, it all comes down to smoothness. It doesn't feel smooth yet. And that's, that's just something that I think they have to work on. Um, and I think once they work on that, it could be a fantastic title. So all in all, Bus Simulator 2018 is a title I would class as good. I'd give it a solid 70 out of 100. I mean, the buses are pretty good, weather effects are lovely, and the fact that there's been a lot of thought that's gone into the actual game idea, I feel like that's a fair score. It's really let down by the map being varied, but the areas being relatively small and the grind that it takes to get to them, which detracts from realism. Uh, passenger variation and the AI, like I just mentioned, really does let that title down massively. Uh, it doesn't hold the same interest for me as Euro Truck Simulator, for example, but having said that, it's certainly a title I could see playing uh, as more and more workshop items are added and the AI is fixed. So if you want to pick up this title, click the link in the description box below to go to Games Planet and purchase it. Don't forget to hit that like button to let me know that you enjoyed the video and leave a comment in the comments box letting me know your thoughts on the title if you've picked it up or your thoughts on the review. Thank you very much for watching and also don't forget to follow me on social media that's at ECGadgetLP both for Twitter and Instagram. Um, that's all from me, and I'll hopefully see you guys next time on Total Reviews.